Um, so we are going to transition our topic area over to the GBA technology. Uh, Mark Wasser, you're going to be helping guide uh, that conversation alongside. Um, who else do we have? Oh yeah, Gerard, you're going to step in a bit, and Dr. Ann Ingram um, is going to touch on her piece as well. So uh, without further ado, Mark, why don't you take it away? Awesome. So I'm Mark Wasser. I'm the Chief Technical Officer of the GBA. One of the really awesome things about the GBA is that unlike virtually any other policy suggesting organization, we actually walk the walk and create the technology ourselves as well. So in one sense, arguably, we're the only ones who really have a clue. So our crown jewel, of course, and many people have talked about it earlier today, is the government business blockchain platform, also known as the GBBP. Um, even though most of you have heard about it, I'm going to go on for a bit about it. Um, hopefully, we can have the same elevator pitch. Uh, people often come and say, well, you know, what's this whole thing? And the answer is, is that conceptually, it's just a blockchain interconnection fabric. We connect ourselves to any other blockchain that's out there that's willing to connect to us. And we can take the services from that blockchain and sell it to any other blockchain. And if you're a government, you're looking for a one-stop shop, um, if you are setting up a variety of different other services that require infrastructure, we're the place to go to. What we're doing is we're building an ever-growing collection of utilities, services, white box applications, and data collections that can all be connected together and used by anyone. And we're also building out a marketplace which provides one, uniform access to all of these things, but also makes it possible once you've bought certain subscriptions to actually form invisible pipelines that can process data, that can perform tasks for you on a regular basis. Basically, we can provide an automated infrastructure for a wide variety of different things. So generally, when I'm giving a briefing about where blockchain is going, one of the real shortcomings of the second wave of blockchains, that being the programmable blockchain wave, is that they all try to do everything themselves. They're jacks of all trade, and they're master of none. Um, they also tend to make it too easy for applications to be buggy or for smart contracts to interfere with each other. So fundamentally, my vision of the future of blockchain is not just single monolithic blockchains, but actually platforms built of multiple blockchains, best of breed blockchains that are all doing what they do best. And a few people tend to think that this is a good strategy. We've been doing this for quite some time. Um, after I first became CTO, the cryptocurrency and mining working group became a lot more active. Um, it's one of the most active working groups currently. Um, we started, of course, by choosing a blockchain. Then we had to rough out our design. We had the first operational version at the beginning of 2020. It was operating on the Azure blockchain. And at that point, we first implemented the GBA token. Shortly thereafter, we implemented gateways to the Ethereum mainnet and the Hive blockchain. So we were able to demonstrate that we could start with the GBA token on either the mainnet or the Hive gateway and ship it all the way to the other via the GBA hub. Um, 
late last year, we converted away from what were Microsoft provided Azure templates to an Azure, that's a version of Linux, virtual machine version of the blockchain. The Azure templates were unfortunately a version back. They were extremely expensive because they insisted on putting them on overpowered machines. And we'd run across all sorts of problems in terms of connecting them to everything else. Uh, earlier this year, we actually were able to host nodes on Raspberry Pis. I will give a little bit more about that in a few minutes, but basically they're a cigarette pack sized hobbyist computer. Um, we are currently doing the initial token distribution. For those of you who missed the first form for initial token distribution, there will be another form appearing very shortly, but it will also have a short deadline. So y'all definitely want to make sure that you don't miss that. There are going to be 250,000 GBA tokens distributed. They have a value in terms of redeeming for GBA courses, memberships, and things of that sort. Um, also with each GBA token, comes a voting token. So if you want a voice or if you want more of a voice in terms of what the GBA does in the future, you definitely want to collect as many voting tokens as possible. Uh, voting tokens cannot be transferred to other people once you earn them. That's how much you get to vote in the GBA. Um, next quarter, we will be implementing our first services on the GBBP. The first thing up is a cybersecurity artificial intelligence penetration test system. Um, fundamentally, the GBBP is a reseller for this service. Um, basically, government organizations and companies that are concerned about whether they've got airtight defenses or if they've got porous cheesecloth can hire this organization or rather through us, it looks like we're providing the service, um, hire this organization and they will do a full scale automated AI driven attempt to penetrate the defenses of that system of that companies or organization systems. And based upon the results, if they do well, they of course get a blockchain-based certificate from us. And if they don't well do well, they of course get a very good report. Before the end of the year, we hope to have many more services and we hope to have the first version of the marketplace up. So one of the most unique things about the GBBP is that it is a next gen, next gen example in that it is a platform with a variety of other blockchains. And there are a few other examples. Um, one that's been around just a little bit longer than we have is Cosmos. Uh, it, unfortunately requires that a blockchain's client be rewritten on top of its base. So there's substantial work before you can have a multi-blockchain platform with Cosmos. Um, Hyperledger Foundation, um, which created, or sorry, which shepherds our base Hyperledger Fabric and Hyperledger Sawtooth as well as numerous other initiatives is also doing a cross blockchain initiative. Unfortunately, it's still under development because they're trying to implement too much functionality. Uh, the most difficult being atomic swaps. There's Polkadot that's appeared recently. 
Um, polka dot again requires some implementation to connect to them, but the biggest drawback is that they accept only very few applicants. In fact, they have what's known as a candle auction in order to determine who will actually be able to connect to the polka dot network. And there's Polygon, which has shown up recently, but it only accepts Ethereum compatible blockchains. What we've done here at the GBA is we've gone for the lowest common denominator that enables the functionality that's truly necessary. And all that really is, is a distributed cloud of gateways. And all the gateways do is they pick up instructions from one blockchain and they move them to another blockchain. There's a little bit of voodoo in terms of locks so that the gateways don't interfere with each other, but fundamentally it's enough to transfer services from one blockchain to enough to transfer tokens and pretty much anything that you need. The GBBP is built on straightforward technology that's been around for a while. Hyperledger BASU is a private proof of authority Ethereum. Private means that we aren't subject to a lot of the attacks that the public blockchains are vulnerable to. Proof of authority means that we're not eating up tons of energy. Uh, it enables us to implement very good security measures. And of course, the fact that it's Ethereum means that we have a huge base of Solidity code that we can use. And of course, we're implemented on Ubuntu Linux, which I believe is the most popular version of Linux. Of course, we'll have distributed gateways to other blockchains, and we'll also have distributed connections to various oracles, applications, and other systems. So I mentioned the Raspberry Pi before. One of the things that we're interested in recruiting for, if you'd like to do something for the GBA, is if you're willing to buy one of these little hobbyist computers, they run for $150 on Amazon with the necessary memory card. There's a easy setup process. You do need to have a 24 by seven internet connection, but given all those things, you can be a node on the GBA blockchain. And this will give us the opportunity to place a red dot on our map at your location. And for you, there will be distributions of a small portion of the profits from the running of the GBA. Any services that we provide through the GBBP will have a minor fee for the transport of those services. And some of that will be, go back to the node owners that basically fundamentally underlie the GBBP. One of the primary messages of the GBA, and it's of necessity because we are, of course, a trade association, is to let a thousand flowers bloom. We're never going to pick only one service to implement. We are going to accept any services that are interested in being on the GBBP. Of course, the only caveat is, is that if you price yourself out of the market, uh, if your services aren't deemed by the market to be worthwhile, um, it, it means that it probably is worthless putting it on the GBBP. So we have a few integration projects. I will get back to a bunch of these shortly. Um, but if you ever wonder why I'm so scattered, uh, fundamentally keeping track of these many things at once tends to be confusing at best. 
The most important thing or the most important part of the GBBP is the cross blockchain tokens. Uh, we've got both the GBBP, the GBA token and the voting token, but those tend to say, stay on the central hub. The utility token, however, is what we use to buy and pay for the various services. So these tokens can transmit value throughout the system. You can buy them pretty much on any of the blockchains that are connected. Um, they're going to be valued against probably the US dollar and they'll be able to be cashed out in Ethereum or in the future, we're also expecting to be able to pay out in fiat or via PayPal or via a number of uh, other methods once we figure out the necessary regulatory hoops that we have to jump through. So getting back to some of the projects, I'll just whip through some of these real quick. Um, part of identity management is also badging for websites and the like. It provides for gamification. The GBA node owners will of course receive a GBA badge. And as we improve the GBA directory on the website, Hopefully people will be trying to earn as many badges as possible because that means they're doing a lot of wonderful things for the GBA. Charitable gaming is a big interest in the charitable gaming group in basically it's predominantly housed in North Carolina. Not only is it looking at doing charitable gaming for governments, but there are also numerous opportunities um, for all sorts of nonprofit organizations to raise money for very good causes. Gerard isn't aware of this because generally I don't tell him after he's aware of the first instance of it. We actually have three potential credit union um, projects. I hope he's grinning now. And one of them actually looks like it might be a very good basis for accepting credit card payments for turning it into um, cryptocurrency and the like. We've got a probable partner who is doing the credit cards for something like 80% of the top 10 cryptocurrency markets or exchanges. So that may be something that we may be looking at in roughly six month time frame. Um, I mentioned the AI penetration testing system. There is the emergency management group that's looking at creating a blockchain platform. Um, it is going to be map based and we'll be able to identify where people are needed, where people are um, currently located, where supplies are and everything else. Um, there are several other government related jobs, uh, combined system for grant applications. We're working on creating white boxed applications for any sort of licensing processes like driver's licenses, marriage licenses, similar Amazing stuff. In Utah. I'm sorry? Amazing, just amazing work, Mark. Thank you for all the great, all the great work you're doing here with this GDPP and, and nice to see all the different integrations that are going in. Awesome. So there's the healthcare delivery platform, which Ann Ingraham, Dr. Ann will be talking about in just a second. I almost forgot about the land titling working group, which is horrible since I've had multiple meetings of, for the past couple of weeks as John looks like he'll have a couple of pilot projects in South America in probably as soon as a couple of months. Uh, we have a lot of non-fungible token projects 
one of the most exciting ones is that in coordination with Dr. Robert Brown from tomorrow, he will be curating a collection of Black History tokens um, featuring many things uh, from his past and also from various museums. And of course, there's always moving forward on identity management and self-sovereign identities for both individuals and businesses. Uh, fundamentally, we're going to need this as a basis for almost all of our services. Um, oh, and I forgot voting systems. This is yet another example of my head exploding. There has been a very, very active voting working group that are currently working on standards, but at the same time, many of the members are either part of an organization that is actually implementing voting standards, such as votes and the like, or are actually in the middle of producing their own solutions. So this, this is a very exciting area that seems to be moving forward rapidly. And at this point, I'll call on Dr. Ann Ingraham. I have changed the format of your slide slightly, but all the information is still there. All right. Um, hello, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Uh, as Mark said, I'm Dr. Ann Ingraham. I'm the Chief Executive Officer of Exponential Health Tech Advisors. We are a minority-owned, women-owned, veteran-owned, certified CVE um, healthcare advising company. And today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, the healthcare delivery blockchain platform. Uh, most recently, I saw a quote from Desmond Tutu that says, there comes a point where you need to stop just pulling people out of the river. We need to go upstream and find out why they're falling in. So the healthcare delivery block blockchain platform, the HDBP is our attempt at finding out and finding a solution of stopping people from falling in, okay? So we have a vision and that's where the vision sort of comes from as Mark is presenting on the screen. Have a vision to create a collaborative healthcare network. You may hear the term the health information exchange as well as an identity information exchange. And you've heard these terms and these acronyms in other healthcare venues and yes, we, it may appear as if we're recreating the wheel. However, um, we recognize those challenges, but again, part of our mission and vision is to figure out how to stop people from falling upstream, <laughs> falling into the river. So we embarked on this uh, particular project because of that passion and also because we recognize at the community level, especially with respect to delivering care to disenfranchised um, individuals and people with mental health conditions at the community level, there is a gap in technology. So again, the vision to provide a collaborative network to create a collaborative um, network to support both care coordination and digital research, and also to provide members of the GBA with commercialization opportunities with respect to healthcare and healthcare delivery. Next slide. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? And I mentioned it just a few minutes ago. Community-based mental health data is not digitized. And this is again, where we've started focusing for the pilots that we have. And of course, we hope that this will grow even larger to the overall healthcare specialties. But mental health is where people are falling in upstream and we're trying to find a way to stop that. There is a mental health digital divide, which we need to close. 
that lack of dig digitization hampers secure, seamless data, data sharing amongst the community-based mental health service providers. And that lack of um, seamless data exchange and care coordination does impact patient care, does impact service user care. And that's the problem we're working to solve with this technology. Next. So obviously we all know the benefits um, of the blockchain platform, but I just wanted to emphasize it here from a healthcare related um, specifically focused standpoint. Main thing, being able to securely digitally store mental health data. And you know, if you know anything about healthcare, we are highly regulated and even more so with mental health. So to be able to provide and leverage the security and the tamper proofness of the blockchain technology in this space, I think provides a lot of benefits, especially, especially for the community-based um, organizations that we're currently working with. And those community-based organizations that we're currently working with are currently on paper. So we are, we are working to transform them to start their digitization journey. And again, to help close that, that gap. <clears throat> Additionally, we'll connect clinical data and social data. So if you think about the social determinants of health, um, that has an impact on outcomes and being able to collect that data and analyze that data along with their clinical data will absolutely help to improve how care is delivered for these types of patients. So again, our mission and goal and the vision is, and the benefits are to improve securely exchanging information amongst mental health providers, real time, on time data access, make sure that information is accurately delivered and accurately entered and then again, improve the care coordination and case management within the community mental health space. Next. And this is just a, a high level, very high level architecture of what the vision is. So being able to have not only the acute care services from a hospital standpoint connected into the exchange, the network, but also have the community-based services connected to the network, primary care services connected to the network, and social services. So we can really have a full rounded 360 view of that patient, that service user. And Right now we have two use cases that we're working with, one in the US and one we're um, working with in the UK. We've started um, <clears throat> and we're working to, to do the information gathering and design phase. And of course, you know, there are some approvals that we have to go through within the organizations. But the phase one of this would be to transition um, those two organizations from paper, which you're currently on right now, to digital. One step in closing that digital divide. And then the next phase, which is even a more complex phase and will require a lot of effort and money, <laughs> is to now create that electronic exchange amongst other community providers, as well as other critical service providers as demonstrated in the diagram on the left. Next slide. All right, so that's, a, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you, Mark. Absolutely. I think it's also worthwhile giving a little bit of a shout out right now. Um, the blockchain selected for the initial uh, implementation is a GBA member, that's Burst IQ. They have an HDBP, uh, sorry, a HIPAA compliant and GDPR compliant blockchain. 
without which this project would probably take a lot more time. Now, just once again, just because they are the blockchain that we're going to be implementing on initially, doesn't mean that other HIPAA compliant blockchains can't be part of the HDBP. Once again, we're talking about a network of blockchains. And as long as the blockchains are HIPAA compliant as necessary or GDPR compliant as necessary, any blockchain can participate. Yeah, Mark, so thank you for that. And I thank you for giving a shout out to Burst IQ. They, um, they've been very critical in, in partnering with us to, to formulate this idea and to work incrementally with us and to provide the environment and the thought leadership on, on this project. So absolutely, thank you for reminding me of that. Absolutely. Of course, one of the things that I'm finally getting back to working on is the infrastructure for the GBA website itself. Uh, I know that there have been some frustrations in terms of speed and occasional glitches. We are currently changing hosting to a world-class hosting provider that also has a number of very interesting features, including secure communications and the like. We will be moving to a more advanced version of WordPress that actually will divide our one site into a constellation of smaller multi-sites. So that should answer a lot of our uh, speed concerns and it will also make it a lot easier to implement functionality like separate calendars and blogs and everything else for each of our individual regions or countries and of course work groups. And the person who's been doing a majority of the design work is Tara Sue Myers, who I'd like to acknowledge at this point because she's doing a lot of fantastic work. Hopefully we'll be doing an invisible migration from our old hosting provider to the new hosting provider sometime in the next week and a half. At the same time, we will also be migrating the GB, gbaglobal.org emails. If someone is currently using a GBA global.org email and hasn't contacted Gerard for um, the necessary migration instructions, please send either he or I an email so we can ensure that you don't lose your emails during the transition. So Rob mentioned this, there are two projects that I personally have been very interested in doing for a number of years. Um, I found it fantastic that I've found other people who are very interested in the first of these projects as well. Um, there will be a presentation tomorrow morning about a blockchain-based crowdsourced debate mapping system. Hopefully this is something that brings back truth in government, something that enables us to actually get information about our politicians, what they believe, what they've done, what they plan to do. Um, hopefully it provides feedback to said politicians by seeing what everyone wants. Uh, there are obviously huge disconnects in it. And this is something that I hope to have implemented over the course of next year, 2022. And I think it will be a real jewel for the GBA. Um, one of my lifetime dreams, again, is another crowdsourcing platform. We all know that blockchain is fantastic um, for getting disparate groups of people to work together in a trustless environment. 
Uh, you can also incentivize people with cryptocurrency. And there are certain concerns about the future that really need to be answered in the next few years. And there's a hint of what I might be talking about. And that's it. Any questions or suggestions? Hopefully we have, ooh, right what I promised, 20 minutes. And of course, we're always looking for volunteers. Mark, I, uh, I Mark if I may make a suggestion, um, uh, and I think Gerard may be picking this up as well. Uh, uh, we did like uh, John Carpenter to speak potentially the last five minutes. So if we could do questions over uh, this, just to the floor to uh, John for an update from his side, uh, we'd appreciate that. Okay. Quick, quick question on the node hosting. This is Don Lovett. Yes, sir. Um, sure, I've, go got a, I've got a, um, a VM machine that I could host a Ubuntu um, instance. So are you open to that or does it need to be on a Raspberry Pi? We're open to absolutely everything. You can do it on a standard machine of some sort. Um, a Windows PC running the Windows subsystem for Linux will work. Uh, Macintoshes will work. A virtual machine anywhere, even on Azure or AWS will work. As long as it runs Ubuntu 2004 and it will be up 24 seven, we would love to have another node. Okay, so okay, I can do that for you. Are you uh, containerizing any of it with Docker or? It's a straight install. So currently it's a straight install, uh, but I also have a kernelized um, multi-node setup. When we set up the blockchain, I actually am putting uh, a half dozen nodes on Azure on one virtual machine by using Docker. And same for AWS is planned. Okay, we can talk offline, but you know, put put my hand up in the uh, be glad to host one. I've got a FiOS gigabyte connection, so fantastic. Uh, Mark, can I ask you a question? This Certainly. Is on Gerard's face. Um, so this it, it's a what is it that you that the part that you've built is not the Raspberry Pi. You've built the what is that called? So the software for a GBBP node is the BASU software. It, it's very standardized. Um, so we're asking people to fundamentally just put um, together, well, to basically have a machine which runs Linux, which will then run the BASU client software on it. What we've done to create the GBBP itself is both to provide the smart contracts to handle the cross blockchain tokens and a variety of other functionality. And we've also created the gateways that serve as the connection between the BASU and the other blockchains we're connected to. Okay, so I have a question I, and I'm a non-technical person. So is there a physical thing that has all of that stuff on it that a person can purchase or is it like a downloadable connection or is it, a, is it a physical thing? So what we've talked about is actually having someone like Kyle or Jordan order a Raspberry Pi, put all the software on it and then just mail it out to people. Got it, okay. And then the total cost of that Raspberry Pi with all of that BASU um, GBBP on it already, the total cost of that is 150? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I, I know we already have one, but I just want to see how it can be um, uh, modulated at, if it were to be hypothetically 
given to a person. I just want to know what is the complete package. So is it possible to get the all of the stuff that you've built without the, the Raspberry Pi or does it have to have the Raspberry Pi with it? So it will work on most any computer. Um, the most challenging aspects are that in order to be a validator node, we really want it to be up basically 24 seven and it needs an internet connection that entire time. Okay. It would have to be on a separate computer like a Raspberry Pi. Okay, thanks. That's all I need to know. Yeah, Mark, uh, this is- All right, uh, thank Mark. you. Uh, Mark, we got three. Oh, go ahead, Mark. Uh, but thanks. following that after you, Mark, uh, there'll be Will, Sari, and Frederick in our lineup for questions. Okay, just, just real quick, Mark. This is uh, Mark Montoya. I have, to have a question for you. So with the Raspberry Pi, I'll also have, have a question about that. So there's two questions. The first one is, should it be hardwired or wireless? Um, I've been doing it wireless as I believe most of the uh, current node donors have been doing. I'm aware of one or two wired connections, but there's no need for wired connection. Um, proof of authority Ethereum is very, very light. Um, it does not require much network bandwidth at all. Uh, the Raspberry Pi, even though it's a small hobbyist computer, is actually seriously overpowered for um, the purpose as well. So you'll see no effect on your home network. Okay. And uh, the last Mark, uh, by the way, it's easy to connect it also by wire. It just sits on your router. Basically, it's right there. So... Okay, and the last one, do we have to open up any ports on our, our router going out to the real world, right? Going out to the WAN? Yes, you do. Um, there are instructions for that. It's fairly easy. Um, your ISP will have the directions for it. Um, you need to open up port 30303. Um, however, we've also discovered that most ISPs actually have that open. Okay, thanks, Mark. All right, great. And I think we're, we're receiving quite a bit of interest in these in these nodes. So we might want to do what we did before, which was host a session um, to uh, help some people get set up. Um, the next person on the list is Will. Will, do you have a question? Well, I, I did, and and. It, it, I apologize if some of my ignorance is showing, but is there any any future integration with exchanges, decentralized exchanges? So part of the answer there is anything that GBA members would like to propose for integration, uh, we could certainly consider I'm not sure entirely what type of integration you'd want to do with DEXs. Um, and we would have to be very careful because those are very highly regulated systems. Thank you. All right, great. Uh, Sari, or sorry. Yes. If I'm not yeah, thank you first, uh, Mark Wizard and Dr. Ingrid for uh, this uh, really um, um, unbelievable work uh, have been done so far. And uh, as as Gerard said, uh, like GBA before three four years is, is not is not what GBA right now. Uh, uh, my my question here is in case of any government or or uh, international partners going to go and, and say, GBA, we are going to partnership with you right now. Like when, when you go to the website, I, I heard you, there's a lot of updates in the infrastructure of the website, but I believe that it's just like a suggestion to be like a one piece of our ready products. So for like HD, uh, the healthcare uh, blockchain platform, GPPP or the voting, some, some, some place where executives can see uh, um, only that benefits because there's really a lot of things to, to see in the GPA where 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 the focus on, on a commercial arm of of, uh, of the GPA global 
shall be uh, um, maybe maybe even uh, I don't know Jared if it's in a plan like to be a separate arm from the nonprofit organization that's that's a decision with with Jared and, and and the board so that's that's my 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 comment question that's that's all but thank you all and and I'm going to uh, set up my node within a week I already have the Raspberry Pi thank you Mark for everything. Awesome. Thank you. Gerard, I think you want to answer his question, don't you? Well, um, I'll, I'll, I'll touch on it briefly, but I think uh, we should uh, talk about that during the board conversation. Um, but in short, the answer is, uh, is, is uh, I, I want to say definitely yes. Um, <clears throat> we're actually looking at spinning off. We're having several conversations uh, right now about spinning off a for-profit entity or maybe even potentially two for-profit entities. Uh, we are also in the process of uh, uh, creating a, um, uh, a government blockchain foundation under the leadership of Ross and Terasu, which would be a 501c3. So a 501c3 is more like a charitable organization, uh, whereas a 501c6 is more of a business league. And we're, we're learning, so for example, in the area of events, um, some of these events can be big business, right? There, there's a, we met a guy recently who buys events, $2 million events, he turns them into $20 million events and sells them. Um, we're also talking about spinning off a technology company. So uh, those conversations are, are definitely happening. Um, there's, um, uh, but I, I would say for sure, uh, uh, for sure, we're 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 going to be spinning some um, uh, something off and create essentially a, a contract environment for GBA members to be able to to enter into contract relationships. So, uh, as a as a as an industry league, we have to sort of uh, uh, you know sort of treat everybody the same. And 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 um, uh, but you know so the work that Dr. Ann's doing with the GBBP. So so here's sort of the here's sort of the strategy. The ideas come together in the working groups. They, they get incubated in the working groups, right? If we look at any working group, and I'll take the GBB, the uh, healthcare delivery blockchain platform as an example, there's, I don't know, more than 100 people in, in that working group. But when it comes time to come together and put the ideas together and, and do the heavy lifting, there tends to be you know five or six people that really roll up their sleeves and get the work done. We want to create an environment where those five or six people who have come together and, and rolled up their sleeves and, 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 and essentially built how the concept or an idea, we can then lift it uh, out of the working group, drop it into, an, into a, a legal entity or structure, potentially get investment for it. So uh, Dr. Ann Ingraham, who many of you know is, uh, is our innovation lead, Right, with the connections to the G20, basically get even potentially get investment funding and then launch that as, as, a, as a business opportunity for the folks that essentially have done the work, right? And so we're, um, we're looking at how do, we, how do we make that happen? Um, and then in terms of the events, you know, maybe, maybe we do the same thing with the events. So there's a lot of those conversations happening. I will tell you that something's definitely gonna happen. Um, you know, Mark and I and Ingrid are, are, are having conversations about it. Um, um, so the answer is definitely yes. We, I just can't tell you the exact forms or structure. GB, the GBA as, as a place for people to connect, communicate, and collaborate will always be there, right? But as we're building out these, these opportunities, we definitely want to create a, a, a contract legal structure that those people can, can reap the rewards of their efforts. Mark, is that, was that a fair assessment? Yeah, that was a great assessment. Um, just one additional thing to add. It sounded as if he was also talking about um, a separate website or something uh, that details a lot of the available services and the like. And the answer there is, is as we get more services up on the GBBP, we're definitely going to have the marketplace put up. We're also going to include non-technology items such as the various courses and um, the thought ran away. <laughs> but, but yes, I mean, all sorts of things, everything that we offer needs to be on a clear separate website from our current membership website. You want to give Fred a great, great question and great comment. 
Yeah, let's uh, shift to Frederick, and then we'll go to John Carpenter. Sounds good. Uh, yeah, it was more of a comment than a that the question, uh, but uh, yeah, related to um, to the GBBP and to and to the nodes and the pies. I think uh, for anybody who is like interested in in better understanding how basically this network sort of like uh, comes to life and how that works, I think it's a it's really great way to uh, um, to try that on uh, to see how that works uh, a little bit. And um, yeah, there is like a, we have like a a chat on like a, a discord channel and everything and so uh, uh it's a it's a very good group to to learn that uh again um mark i had another question for the uh, passion project or the these other projects where is where can we find more information about that um i uh, i i think it's a it's a great to be able to have a yeah a, a better connection between uh, uh uh, citizens and their representative and everything and uh, and getting people uh, accountable uh, and um, to their thoughts uh, and so yeah I, I would like to learn more about it and uh, and see how I can uh, help with that. Absolutely. So I'm giving a talk tomorrow morning at I think it's ten o'clock um, for sorry it's at nine. It is nine thirty to ten. Right. So and that that's a great way to find out more about it. Uh, we will be starting up a working group for it, but I anticipate that it's going to be in about four or five months um, before things slow down enough that I, I can divert some attention to it. And Tara Sue is also uh, very interested, um, but she's currently buried as well on almost as many projects as I am. But I, I'm certainly writing your name down 